Tom here from Lawrence Systems. This is October 13th of 2025, and about two weeks ago, TrueNAS 2510 RC1 was released. As usual, I ignored the warnings. It says, do not use early release software for critical tasks, and upgraded my own systems, including the one that I'm using to edit and record this video on right now. I'm happy to report nothing caught fire and testing has gone well. This release has some interesting new features, such as TrueNAS Connect support, which I did a video on, you'll find linked down below, NVMe over Fabric support, a lot of you have asked about that, App migration, NVIDIA, open GPU kernel module support, and more. Now, this video is not sponsored by TrueNAS, but if you'd like to hire us for consulting services or just want to get a cool shirt like the one I'm wearing right now, head over to lawrencesystems.com. Let's get started. Now, as of today, this is still release candidate, which means it's generally feature complete, but there's still maybe some bugs and things that need to be fixed before final release. I like to jump on these early releases so I can help with the finding the bugs and get to test out lots of things. One thing I just can't say is gold eye. I'm going to not use that word because it keeps making me think of the Nintendo 64 game Golden Eye, which maybe a lot of you have played or those of you that haven't. I'm just aging myself here. I thought it would have been cool if they put a nod in there to put like 25.10.007, but well, whatever. Enough with those jokes. And there's probably a lot of good reasons you can't just say that. There's probably some copyright things going on. But the first thing I want to talk about, redesign management interfaces. The update screen introduces risk tolerance profiles. I just really like the way they worded that. This is common language in cybersecurity. And what I think is a good way to label how you want to do your updates. Are you an early adopter? Are you a developer? Or are you just a general user, which probably a lot of you are? And then we have, where some of my clients are, mission critical, which means keep me on the most stable version possible. Don't upgrade until it's really necessary and it's been thoroughly tested. And all of us that have adopted things early have, well, found all the bugs and we can just easily update safely and securely. ZFS performance and stability improvements, app pool migration. Let's talk about that and I'll minor touch on this. Now this is my lab system and I have two pools, Unimatrix 1 and Unimatrix 0. Let's go over here to our applications and we look at the configuration and we choose pool. We can say it's on Unimatrix 0. Something I want to point out. If we SSH in a system, we do a ZFS list. It's going to list all the pools and I just filtered it for just the IX app. So here is where the IX apps live. You can see they're only on this pool. The other pool isn't showing up here until we do the migration. Now, when we do the migration, we're going to go here to Unimatrix 1. We're going to say migrate existing applications. I only have one, so this will happen relatively fast. And now the apps have been migrated and are running on the next pool. But something I want to point out, if we run this again, it leaves the apps on the other pool. Now that's fine because it just did a replication, brought them over, did all the migrations. There's nothing you have to do, but something of note. If you would like to move them again and we want to move them back to the other pool, that's not going to work. And the reason why is the apps are already existing on the other pool. So if we switch back and forth between these, I'll end up with an error that those apps are existing because it leaves a copy of them. Right now, there's nothing in the UI that allows you to delete the apps off the old pool. You just have to do that manually right now. I did mention it to the developers that manually destroying these is an option from the command line, but it would be cool if there was a web UI version to, once I felt confident that the apps have moved, destroy those apps on that other pool because I don't really need them because the apps are not exposed in the UI. So if we look at the data sets, you're not seeing those apps data sets because they're set to hidden. If they had a little box that said unhide those, that'd be great. Now onto the topic of ZFS enhancement and some improvements. A specific thing, and I was actually working on a video for this, and I don't have to make this video now. When you go here to data protection, I purposely have a lot of tasks running and one of them in a failed state. The LTS video archive to Trinity, this pushes across the VPN, and I made it fail by breaking the connection. This was a problem before because the ZFS resume wouldn't work properly. Now, if we go and run this, we're doing it live. This is me testing it last night, uh, told it to fail basically by blocking the connection after it already started and it's not erroring out. It's picking up where it left off and running the replication. This was a bug for a while where ZFS does have the ability to do a resume, but Trance wouldn't always 
figure that out. You had to manually clear the resume tokens from the command line. It was kind of a pain. The other option is a checkbox they have in replication. It says recreate from scratch. That was what some people would say to do. The problem with recreating from scratch is, well, it would retransfer everything if you check this box. That's not necessarily what you want is a recreate from scratch. You just have some partial transfer that failed for whatever reason, maybe because I forced disconnected or occasionally connections get broken and you want it to resume. Well, that is now fixed and uh, it's been working fine and yep, found the token and resuming the replication run. Advanced networking and storage. This is a pretty big enhancement to 25.10 because we get both NVMe over fabric support and that's meaningless unless you have really fast connections. So they updated the drivers and they provide 400 gig networking support, or as they put it up here, terabit ethernet performance. Because NVMe, as we know, is very fast. Being able to run NVMe over fabric is, well, something that requires a lot of speed if you really want to take advantage of it. This is pretty cool, but there's some caveats as sometimes there are. And the first one is going to be VMware ESXi compatibility. NVMe over TCP is incompatible with VMware ESXi environments. Thought I should point that out right away because, well, some people might still be running VMware. If you're running other standard Linux-based hypervisors and, well, many other Linux tools that this is supported on, you're in luck. It's only those of you that are still, well, living in that VMware ecosystem. And there's other options out there, I'll just say. Not to get off topic, but something to consider. They do have a whole tutorial on configuring it here. I've not done any extensive testing with it, but this is what it looks like inside of TrueNAS. It's under the shares. You build multiple MVME subsystems, essentially, and I built one that's just labeled test. And you can see the namespace. I have it pointed at a ZVAL that's located here. I set the ports up. I don't have any associated hosts. I just wanted to walk through the setup and make sure it worked. Something else of note, if you would like the RDMA features and you have capable hardware, you will also need the enterprise license that is noted in the documentation. Virtual machine improvements. Ah, this feels like it's been going on for a little while and I do recommend listening to the T3 podcast. They have talked quite a bit why they've made the changes they've made because I know people just throw out the air. We want a wonderful stable system that just magically works and we all do uh they made some changes in the back end they talk about those changes on a t3 podcast of where they're going with it and to provide the best system there was some breaking changes there's no doubt about that i have so far not done many videos or tutorials around virtualization in TrueNAS because it felt like it's in flux i feel like it's a more stable place now they're really working on making it work much better therefore i'll probably do some future videos on it but i did want to test it out in 2510. Now I did load up a Debian 13 test, make sure it worked. I even used a VNC connector on it. So if we look at the devices, I have the display drivers VNC and you can connect externally to the VNC. And it seems to be working perfectly fine. I do notice there's a little screen tearing here, but that's typical of VNC. And this is not a particular fast machine and I have not passed through a GPU, which is supported. Now I really do want to dive deeper into the virtual machines. They have added, for those that needed, the secure boot support right here. So it is enhanced, but it is not going to be replacement for a flow-blown, dedicated hypervisor platform. But if you have something that needs to run near storage and you don't want any layers in between, well, this can be pretty ideal. So they're doing quite a few enhancements of it. I also note, and this was added not that long ago, is when you're building a new system, there is now the ability to do an import. So when you get down to the disk options, you can click on import image, and they now support QCOW, QED, RAW, VDI, VHDX, VMDK, all being imported to ZVAL. So this should make it easier for those of you that wanna bring in existing virtual machines. Now, I really only covered the major changes of TrueNAS 2510. There's obviously a ton of small and minor changes. I'll leave a link to their documentation hub so you can go through them as well or even sort them by priority. I don't know when they got this little pull-down menu like this or maybe it's the first time I noticed it, but I think this is really nice for helping you organize all the changes between the different versions, the known issues, et cetera, et cetera, along with the full change log. The upgrade across all my systems went smoothly, but before updating, always make sure you have a backup and a plan. And TrueNAS does have boot environments to make it easy to roll back if things go wrong. If you want to dive deeper into the details behind these changes, I highly recommend listening to the TrueNAS T3 podcast. It's straight from the team, so you hear not just the what, but also the why for the changes they are making. 
And remember, open source is built on community. Participating in the TrueNAS forum is a great way to share your experiences. It also helps developers better understand the real world use cases that you're using. I'd also like to hear from you. Leave those thoughts and comments down below. What new features do you like that you don't like? And uh, see online in the forums, mine or the TrueNAS ones. Thanks.